People are impatient and they don't care. People do not care. Yvonne Brown has been behind the wheel of a school bus for years. Now she is in charge of training other drivers in Osceola County. I'm just teaching them how to be safe in the bus. She says one thing has not changed. Drivers illegally passing school buses while students are getting on or off. I've even been in situations where the cars pass and drivers behind them is blowing the horn. I'll even blow the horn to try to get their attention to let them know, you know, hey, you're supposed to stop. Osceola County School says it saw a record number of stop arm violations during a survey this year, a more than 70 percent increase compared to the year before. It just baffles me that that many people are ignoring a school bus. The school district is not alone. I requested the results for other local districts that participated in the same survey over the last two years. Orange and Volusia both saw rise in drivers passing school buses illegally. Those drivers could not be cited until now. Under the new state law, drivers could face a $225 fine for stop arm violations. Local school districts can hire law enforcement or contract a third party vendor to monitor the camera and issue tickets. There must also be signs on buses letting drivers know they are recording. All of our buses are equipped with 10 cameras total. Uh, six interior and four exterior. Within the last school year, Volusia County Schools upgraded all of its buses to include 360 degree cameras. We do have the capability of seeing um, cars that run our stop signs or our stop arms. Director of Student Transportation Rodney Smith says the district monitors the cameras. Leaders can view what is happening live or download the footage. So the 360 is actively monitoring, so it's always recording whether they're driving or not. News 6 boarded a bus and got an up-close look at the technology. There was a stop arm violation. They would see a car passing on this left side of the screen. Drivers can view what is happening anywhere inside or outside the bus. Our external cameras have already paid dividends when um, our buses have been hit um, on the road. We're able to come, we're able to bring um, the area managers who report to those accidents, bring a dongle along with their laptops and they're able to show the law enforcement officer at the scene uh, right then what happened. School leaders in Brevard, Flagler, Osceola and Seminole counties all tell us they plan to enforce the new law by fining drivers who illegally pass buses. They are still trying to figure out who will monitor the cameras and issue the tickets. But until then, that all it takes is a few minutes to just wait. And those few minutes could cost somebody's life. Shot in the face and he's going to be he's in stable condition that we know right now. A large crime scene for hours Wednesday outside this motel on US 192 in Kissimmee. Deputies say an altercation between two men led to gunfire around 8 a.m., leaving a man shot and rushed to the hospital, all as the search continues for the shooter. Tina Connolly said the man who was shot is her friend. He's a good dude. He takes care of the he take care of people around him. You know, he one of them people that really like look out for people out here. For hours, we saw crime scene investigators taking pictures as detectives laid down evidence markers outside the Arlington Inn Motel near Sam's Pub and Lounge. We have a lot of drug activity out of here and um, it's something that's been an ongoing issue. Uh, so we're trying to keep it under control. Osceola County Sheriff Marcos Lopez said the shooting appears to be an isolated incident and they're working to try and piece together a motive and track down the shooter and a better suspect description. To the video cameras, we're working all those things as we speak to see if we can pinpoint this and get more information on whoever's involved. Do you believe Sheriff? Man, he's a good dude. And I really, I'm just, I hate to see the violence in our community. Sheriff Lopez says they've been working to cut down on drug activity and crime in this area. And he said overall violent crime in Osceola County is down compared to this time last year. And you can help in this investigation, you're asked to call the Osceola County Sheriff's Office right away. In Osceola County, I'm Jerry Askin, getting results, News 6. With the average cost of price nearly $100 to fill up a tank right now, drivers tell me they'll be lucky if this even lasts a week. Robert DeCosi told us it cost him $143 to fill his car up weekly. According to AAA, this week, Florida's national average is $3.80. That's 50 cents more than gas prices on the 4th of July. It's fluctuated a little bit, but it's never going back to where it's comfortable. The reason, the rising demand for fuel and record-breaking heat, which impacts oil refineries. If we have a hurricane that moves into the Gulf of Mexico and it even threatens refineries along that area, 
You can see gas prices increase due to concerns about supply shortages. A higher demand with extended summer travel is another huge reason gas is so expensive. Demand is always there. It's just the supply side that tends to, to fluctuate. Experts believe once students are back in school, those prices could go down. Dacosi says he thinks prices will rise with more teachers, students, and parents traveling to class in cars and buses. The more people are on the road driving cars, i.e. parents driving kids, schools, buses driving kids, it's going to eat up more of the supply, which is going to make the price go up. And even though gas prices are high right now, drivers are in a much better place than they were last summer. In Orlando, Kennedy Mason, Getting Results, News 6. And sound can be used to heal, it can be used to inspire, it can be used to give joy. Uh Jason Morsalis, an award-winning American jazz drummer and vibraphone player, has a love for music. He's seen here playing the drums with his late father, Ellis Morsalis, a pianist and educator who says he's taught him so much. I talk with him a lot about not only music, but how it relates to life and people. He comes from a family of musicians. In fact, several of his brothers also have that passion for music and ear for harmony. Including his older brother, Winton Morsalis, a jazz legend known by many for his trumpet recording for the opening of CBS Mornings. Jason is now hoping to make his late father proud as he'll start this fall as a visiting instructor at the University of Central Florida to work as a jazz drum set instructor. I'd like to take from his example, he would deal with teaching students whatever it is they needed to learn. It wasn't even about just music. It was whatever they needed to learn to make their life better. Professor Jeff Rupert is a saxophonist and oversees the jazz studies programs at UCF. I'm always sending students out around the country performing and we expect that Jason will be a part of that family that's helping our students to move on to that next level. Now here's one of the classrooms where Marcellus will be teaching from here at UCF. Not only will students have a chance to learn from him, but have a chance to perform with him. At our jazz juries and compulsory exams, every semester, the students mm -hmm. play with the faculty to mm -hmm. get graded. Music can have a positive impact towards people, so I want the students to learn all of that. Reporting from the University of Central Florida, I'm Edward Franco, getting results, News 6.